Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review. Today, very excited to check it out. Drop it from Cosmos. This is for two to four players. Age is eight plus. It'll take about thirty minutes to play. And in Drop it, you're gonna be taking wooden pieces and, well, you guessed, dropping them into this Tetrisy looking plastic board right here, trying to maximize the most number of points you can get. It's not gonna be that easy though, because when you're dropping pieces, you have to be concerned about where they are, what they're touching, what they might be touching, where pieces are going to go flying, all sorts of different stuff like that. It is a light, simple family game, but it's good. Let's open it up and I'll tell you what I think. Alrighty then, we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Drop It. So first and foremost, we have our handy dandy rule sheet. Two pages, double-sided, full color, full of plenty of pictures, illustrations, examples. Very well done, should have you up and running in no time at all. Also a really simple game, so I can teach you how to play right now. So in drop it you are going to try to score the most points by dropping pieces into this board right here that you are going to set up how you set up the board can differ in one of two ways either you can be focused on where shapes cannot go or you can be focused on where colors cannot go and that will make more sense in a minute so let's go over the components let's get into the gameplay so first component wise you're going to get your handy dandy little board here we're going to keep track of score it's really nice perfectly serviceable it also has spots in the middle so you can put plus 25 and plus 50 once you round around the board nice enough next you're going to have these big chunky tokens to keep track of your scores you're going to have a whole bunch of these pieces and they will come in four different shapes you're going to have squares you're going to have diamonds you're going to have triangles and you're going to have circles and you are going to be dropping them into this contraption right here uh, depending on the player count you'll get different amounts of the different colors uh, so i can't really tell you which ones you get and which ones you don't get it's all laid out right there the easiest way to tell you is if it's four players you get one color but if it's three players you get one color and then three of another and then you can see it right there next you're going to have this little board which you're going to set up at the beginning of each game it's really easy to set up you just slide it in right there and you're good to go uh, next, you're going to put on the pieces on the sides. So you'll put in these pieces right here, which will tell you where you cannot put certain shapes or certain colors. Then down here, this is going to separate off areas where you cannot place things. So for instance, I could not place a square anywhere, because there's no square, anywhere from here to there to there to there. No, no squares here. But also, down here on the bottom row, I cannot place a, um, a diamond, and I also can't place a circle. So as you can see, you're going to have to pay attention to the left, to the right, and also what's down here. But that's not all, because when you're playing pieces, you also are going to have to make sure that you don't have two of the same pieces touching each other. So if these two squares were touching each other even just a little bit, you know, get no points. Also, you have to make sure that two of the same color are not touching each other. So if these two are touching each other, you score no points if you're the one who just dropped them. Let's just show you how the game is played because it's a really simple game. So on your turn, you're going to take one of your pieces, any one of your pieces that you have, and you're going to try to figure out how you can possibly drop it in here to score yourself some points following these rules, those rules, and they don't touch any colors or shapes that are similar to you. So let's take a look. I got... Don't put any diamonds down here on the bottom row, and also don't put any circles down here on the bottom row. So maybe I can squeeze in a square. Maybe a square will get me a point. A square does not, because it is not quite... Actually, yeah, my mistake. So yeah, it is down there. It's in the one-point quadrant. And as you can see, it's really kind of nice how they divided up the quadrants. You can clearly see anything below here is one point. This is two points. This is three points. This is four points. So I would score one point for me. Hooray, so I'd move myself up one point. Now would be the next turn. They might say, hmm, well, let's see. I could probably get into this row two. No triangles and no squares. So you know what? I'm going to go ahead. Oh, but I was going to drop this. But if I do it, I have to be careful because it can't go right here. It can't be on that section. So maybe I can kind of lean this up against that. Get real lucky. We'll see. Nope, not lucky at all. So I would get no points there. The next person might be like, yeah, I'm going to try that same strategy, but over here. And so they might drop that. And you're going to continue to go until uh, you haven't run out of pieces. The last other rule that I forgot to mention is that if you put in your piece and it's poking out of the top like this, so it's like all the way at the end of the game, that is not a legal move as well. 
So how do you see how many points you get? You get points based on where you are. So one point, two point, three points, four points, five points, six points, seven points, eight points. But there's also these little circles, which hopefully you can see. Yeah, these little circles right here, these bubbles. And if you're in a small bubble, you're going to get one extra bonus point. If you're in a medium bubble, you get two extra bonus points. If you're there, you get three extra bonus, point, bonus points when you drop it. And you score everything after you drop it because, as you can see, things are going to be moving all over the place. Um, but... You're going to continue to go until everybody's used all their pieces. Whoever has the most points will be the winner of Drop It. And that, in a nutshell, is how the game is played. All right, then. Drop It from Cosmos. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros. Let's go over the cons. First, on the con side, game's not going to be for everybody for a variety of different reasons. It is a light, simple, family weight game about dropping wooden pieces into a plastic, tetris -y looking thing. And that's just not going to be for everybody. There's no real strategy in this game. Maybe you can try to set yourself up in the future if you're playing two players, but at three and four players, that's not going to happen at all. It's really just looking all around at all the different spots where you could possibly drop in the shapes and colors that you have and thinking, could I possibly get it there? No, probably not, but hey, I'm going to try it anyway. And that's really the extent of what you're going to be doing. Also, two to four players, it's a little bit of a restrictive player count, and I actually liked it best at two players, which was slightly disappointing. Uh, I was expecting to like it at four and three players, and it, it's okay. It's it's good. It's still good at three and four players, but I thought that it was better at two players. Um, I don't think it's great by any stretch of the imagination. I think this is purely a good game, but I liked it best at two players. It went a little bit quicker. It was a little bit snappier. So, yeah, there you go. Um, any other cons that I have with the game? No, I mean, it's easy to assemble. You, you just got to really know that it is a light, simple, family weight, dexterity game when you get going into it. Ages 8 plus is about the right age range, but that being said, you are, especially if you're playing with 7 and 8 year olds, have to constantly remind them, well, don't be sure to pay attention to what you can't play on this part or what you can't play on that part or the fact that you can't do this, you can't do that. So some of the rules are a little bit restrictive. I actually kind of like playing with the Joker tiles, which we'll talk more about in the pros. But moving on to the pros, Drop It's good. I like it. I think it's a, a good game. I'm going to be keeping this game for my classroom to play with those kids they really did enjoy it a good deal and there's a lot to like about this game so first component wise great components top notch from the top to the bottom the cubes the board the the big plastic standee the the wooden pieces it all looks and feels good it fits in the box nice and easily and i like all of that i also it was more thinky than I thought it was going to be. Not saying it's a complex game, but you really do need to think about where you're placing things because you have a lot of restrictions when you play because you have to be looking at the bottom. Then you have to be looking at the sides. And then you have to be looking at the shapes around where you're dropping and the colors around where you're dropping and the shapes and colors that you have. So there's some kind of like a little bit of a rationing like... Man, I've already spent three of my circles. Do I really want to spend my last circle this early in the game? And it does add another unique element to the game, which I did enjoy. Um, there's not much really else I can tell you about it. It's a pretty straightforward game. I liked it. The kids in my class really enjoyed it. We had a good deal of fun with it. Four players was our least favorite player count. But that being said, it's still a good game of four players. Everybody still had fun. It's just... The three people that had already played it at two players were like, yeah, I think I like it best as a two-player game, and I agree with them as well. So in the end, drop it from uh, Cosmos. It's good. I like it. If you're in the market for an abstract strategy game uh, where it's more dexterity, dropping things down into there, trying to figure out what's going to happen, I think this is one you might want to check out. There's also simpler rules. I did not give those simple rules an opportunity to try. Uh, but you could put those in and you could probably dumb this down to, say, a game for five-year-olds, which is one thing that I probably will do, actually, this weekend, is play this with my five-year-old son, but just with uh, a little bit less restrictions. So that is Drop It from Cosmos. If you're in the market for a light, simple, uh, dexterity, family, abstract strategy, I guess it would be game, be sure to check this one out. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below in the comments below. Let me know. Jelly beans, what's your favorite type? For me personally, obviously... Oh, buttered popcorn all day. Buttered popcorn ones. Just, how do they do that? How do they make those taste so much like buttered popcorn? It blows my mind. Let me know in the comments below. What's your jelly bean of choice? And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube. <clears throat>